G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today in the lab we're looking at a Digitor Q1585 multimeter that's lost the magic smoke. What's wrong with it? Let's check it out. This is one of my personal multimeters that I take to the college while I'm teaching class so that the students can use the other ones at the college. I foolishly lent this particular one to one of the students. When it was handed back to me, the magic smoke had disappeared. <laughs> Didn't work anymore. <clears throat> Silly me, what was I thinking? All right, let's check it out on the bench, find out how much damage has been done. I've already popped the back off of it just so that it saves us a bit of time. Uh, we stick that to one side, the cover as well as the back. Now, what do we have inside here? We've got a battery. We have some other components that should lift off our uh, switching knob eventually. Oh, there we go. We'll put that to one side. Be careful with these that you don't lose these fellas here. Um, they make contact onto the board here uh, so that you can use the control knob to select whatever you want. So I've popped out one of the fuses. It's blown one fuse already. Um, other things that I need to check. I, when I'm doing a diagnosis, I prefer to look at things like diodes, um, transistors, those sorts of things. They tend to be the first things that lose the magic smoke. So I'm going to check some of these and I'll just give you an idea of uh, what's been done and what hasn't been done. Uh, there's not much on the back there. It's mainly on the front here that I'll do my testing. But yeah, diodes, transistors, those sort of things. We've got a diode over here. We'll just check that one. That's okay. So of course a diode is a one-way valve and it should, electrical one-way valve that is, should only measure one way. So that's that way. That's okay, 0.5 and no measurement that way. That's good. Let's have a look at this little transistor over here and it's got no reading there. It's got a correct reading there. 0.6 that way, should have nothing this way, I believe. So that little transistor's okay. What about this transistor over this side? Flip him around. I'll bend it back a bit, make it easier. Oops. Turn him around, that way. Um, how's that looking? Okay, no reading there. Ooh, look at that. 0 0.002, that usually means a dead short. And I might find it dead short there as well, perhaps. No, that's okay that way. But um, pop him off there. Pop, yeah, dead short that way, guys. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the transistor is shorted, but something along that path is. So removal of the transistor is important. And then doing that check again through these little legs to tell you if there is a short further along or not. Okay, so just take my word for what I'm reading on the multimeter because you can't actually see it. So uh, what I'm trying to test is between here and here. That says a dead short. Dead short this way, if I remember rightly, which it is. That fella there's had it. That fella there's had it. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some other diodes down here. Looks like Zener diodes or something. I might have to check them on the back of the board. I'll check them in a little while when I have more access to it. Um, oh, there's a diode over here too. Can you see that one? This little bloke just here. Let's just check that one. 0.4, so it's a good reading. And we've got, yeah, 1.3, something along those lines. It's okay. Another little baby diode over here. 0.9, okay. What else have we got? 0.5, so that's okay. So a change between the, the voltage there, voltage reading. Try that one. That seems okay that way. That seems okay that way. Let's try the different, uh, turn our leads around the other way. They seem fine there. So that one and that one, that seems okay. That one and that one, no reading between there and there. That's all right. That's okay there. Uh, look, there's testing that can be done under here. There's a heap of diodes uh, under here, as you can see quite a few of them, quite a range of them. Um, 
I have ordered some parts already, so I'm going to go ahead and replace those those uh, faulty transistors, etc., and diodes that I've mentioned. It's going to have to be a step-by-step -step process and replace these parts. Check the shorts along the way, and if there's no shorts, then of course move on. Oh, poor little multimeter. The first little fella that we're going to go after is this transistor right here. Now I apologise if you can't see some of the time. It's because I've got my magnifying lens in the road and I need to see as well. Now this one is classified as a, let me have a little bow peep closer, uh, TL431AA and I believe that I have one of those in stock. So I'll go ahead and replace that. Uh, There's a dead short between the uh, base and the emitter right across there. So once we remove that I'll check again and make sure that that short has disappeared and it's only within the transistor itself. I did make a bit of a blunder when pulling off this transistor or diagnosing it. I didn't realise that the track joined the base and the emitter together. It's just a tiny bit of track across there which I couldn't see with it installed. Look, I'm a bit of a putz. It wasn't a transistor after all, it was a shunt regulator. So, my bad. I've done some testing on the bench as you can see and I've pulled that little um, regulator apart and tested it with a 1k ohm resistor. Um, and I'm getting 2.5 volt regulation out of it, even though I've put in 5 volts into it, and that's how it's meant to work. And that tested exactly the same as the new one, so, ah, my bad. Another thing I've done is made sure that there's not a dead short across those. Uh, the centre pin is actually earth or ground, and that's why I was getting that reading. The other two um, are connected to one another, and then they go through a, a resistor over here, and that's how it's meant to work anyway. But uh, this here is earth correctly, so um, it appears that it was all right. That was my bad, but uh, hey, we've got to learn somehow, hey. Not sure how well you can see it, but I've pulled off this little transistor over here because I was getting a uh, short reading between this terminal and this terminal. But if you have a really close look, I don't know how close I can get in without it going all fuzzy on you. This has actually got a tiny little track that was hidden underneath, therefore creating, well, what appeared to be a short but in actual fact it's okay. Another tricksy one when you don't have a wiring diagram. I've been on this for a while guys and I've been struggling to try and get my head around what's faulty, what's not faulty. Everything seems like legit, seems to be working okay, but every time I test something it just doesn't add up, you know. Um, for instance one of the major problems of course is the fact that um, like we've got uh, voltage reading on the, the uh, screen there so I know my screen's okay and of course if I hook up uh, positive and negative, uh, there's a battery there. I should have um, about 9 volts, something along those lines. I've got nothing. Just doesn't make any sense. Um, if we go to AC, um, resistance is out. There's a few other things, and yet the other side of the scale is okay. Um, so I started pulling it apart, and I'm trying to remember who I lent it to and what we were doing at the time. Now, when I um, get the students to have a look at multimeters etc. Of course I get them to do voltage, uh, current and resistance. And one of the main problems that students have is they forget to change over the positive connector here over to here when they're doing uh, current and they blow the fuse. So I've taught them, okay, you know where the fuses are in the storeroom, go ahead and replace a fuse and I've taught them how to pull them apart, etc., pull the multimeter apart and replace this fuse, put it back together successfully. And they've got the thing up and running, I assume, then they've snuck it in because it's not working quite right. So I thought to myself, well, look, something just doesn't add up. Um, when I popped out my uh, dial here, and that just pops out like that, I had a look at it and I thought to myself, just have a look at it there, guys, if you can. Um, you notice that they've got little bent uh, bits of contact points, I guess, and as it scrolls around, they contact various points on here. I had a look over here, and I thought, well, looks like one's missing. And fortunately, I have another multimeter virtually the same as this, so I decided to pull the other one apart and have a look at it. And this is what I found. There's a classic example of what can happen just by me moving it. One of these has actually fallen off my good one. I certainly don't want to lose that. I'll pop that back into place before I continue. As you can see, they kind of just sit there and it's easy to knock them off. And I believe that that's what the student has done. This is my good one. And this is the one that uh, they have used. And you can see that they've put them in the wrong spot. 
Uh, we've got one, two, three over this side, which is similar if I turn that around, like that. Okay, they've actually got this fellow here that belongs over here. They've put it on the inside there. So what I'm gonna do is just try my good one and pop it onto the multimeter here and see if that makes the difference. Get in there, fella. There we go, all right. So let's have a look at it now. We're on RPM, we'll just scoot across till we get to something that makes a little more sense. AC, we wanna go back one to DC, all right. So that's got ghost voltage as what we would normally expect. I'm just gonna hook up my little battery and see what sort of reading we get out of it. <laughs> Will you look at that, hey? I actually got I even got the negative sign right because I hooked it up backwards, my bad. But that's good. Oh, look at that, guys, seriously. So that's what's happened. After all my testing, etc., scratching my brain, that's all that it was. It was operator error. They've obviously dropped um, this fella here somewhere when they were pulling the, the dial off to get to the, to the fuse to replace it, I assume. That would be the only reason that they would need to pull the multimeter apart. And they've popped this fella here, or this fella here, over on the inside, and that's the only mistake that they've made. So that's fantastic news. Look, it doesn't seem like a huge repair, but the thing is, as long as it's fixed, that's all that matters. Some of these things can mess with your head for some time until you actually nut it out. You get so caught up in the complexity of it all that you forget about the basics. I did start way back here at the battery, and then I started to go through, and then I came across this bloke. So isn't that great news? Something simple for something that's so complex. I've now got it back up and running again. I'm pretty happy with the results there. Um, the screen works properly. I've tried all the features and they're working correctly. Um, one stupid thing that I did do when I was trying to pull it apart was on the back of these main terminals here, uh, the solder joints were dry. So I've decided to, you know, re-solder them. The problem being is that I didn't pull off all the little plastic sleeves and they melted and I had the dickens of a time to try and get this uh, face off the back etc. So um, all I've done is put some heat shrink in there and so you can identify the colours by the heat shrink that you can see in there instead of trying to you know do something with these bits and pieces. Of course I mentioned too that the students blew a fuse that's what started this whole big saga um, and then they tried to replace it uh, of course, it was a 0.5 of a fuse when they put it into the current feature there when they were trying to measure current. So I've replaced that one as well. I've put it through its paces. I'm happy with the results and everything's up and running again. It's been a learning curve for me for sure because uh, sometimes you've got to step back and look at the simple things. And of course, having a spare one really helped me. Um, I was able to pull that apart and check, you know, just the very basics of things. I also did notice that the power seemed to come and go on occasion. Initially, I thought it was a bad connection between the connector here and the battery, but that wasn't the case. It appears that there's a broken wire in there somewhere. I had another one of these, so I just soldered that in place. Job's done on that one. So yeah, it's all good, ready to go, and uh, I can take it back to class again and not lend it to any students. It's a bit of a change to have such a simple repair, even though it took a little while to think it out. And I must admit, it wouldn't have been quite as easy had I not had that other multimeter. Have as many multimeters as you like, guys. Look behind me, there's a whole shelf full of them. I think I've got well over 20 now, which is amazing. I love my multimeters. This was a simple repair. I do have other multimeters that I have to repair in the future, and possibly they'll be more complex. So hang in there for those future videos. I hope you enjoyed the video today, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like, feel free to comment down below. Oi, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos, do you? Of course not. Nah. Anyway, guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later. Bye.